the ANOVA summary table is really key for doing the ANOVA. All right, if we go here through line by line, our end game is the p-value or the probability of this F ratio that we calculate. All right, this is the number that tells us if we're gonna reject our null, that there are no differences in groups, and if we reject the null, we think there is a difference somewhere between those groups. All right, we don't know yet where the difference is, but we know that there is a difference. So that's key. So the NOVA just tells you that there is a difference. Then we do additional comparisons, post hoc comparisons to figure out where exactly are these differences. So let's go through it step by step. First, we have the between variation, we have the within variation, and then we have the total variation. Right? So we calculate the sum of squares between groups, the sum of squares within, and then these two added up are the total sums of squares. And we're going to more detail how to calculate this. For right now, I'm just going to walk you through this table. Because if you calculate these three elements, you are halfway there. The second component would be to have the degrees of freedom. So that is for the sources between, that is k minus 1. k is the number of groups. And then for the degrees of freedom within, we do the total sample size minus k, the number of groups, right? And that would then be the um, degrees of freedom two. And then for the total uh, sums of squares, we have degrees of freedom is n total sample size minus one. So if you think back here, just a quick side note, this actually is similar to what we did in the uh, independent samples t-test, right? We, we calculated n minus 1 plus n minus 1 for the degrees of freedom. Here we do essentially the same, but we uh, this is a little shortcut, right? We could do sample size of each group minus 1 plus the sample size of the next group minus 1, right? Instead of doing that, we just say everybody that's in the sample minus k, the number of groups, essentially comes down to the same thing. So once you have these degrees of freedoms, now it's a simple step because the mean of the squares between is simply sums of squares divided by the degrees of freedom 1. That gives you the mean of squares. Same thing with mean of squares within, that is the sums of squares within divided by the degrees of freedom 2. So now we have our estimates for the variation within, uh, between groups and for the variation within groups. And to get our F ratio, we simply divide the squares between the, with the squares within. So it's mean of squares between divided by mean of squares within gives us the F ratio. And then to get the F ratio, we calc uh, to get the probability of the F ratio, we can either uh, use Excel to give us the exact probability, or we could use the same approach that we used for the t-test with a critical t. So we could look up a critical f value and then determine if our f ratio here, if our f value that we calculated is bigger than the f critical or not. 